John, there's Jeremy Corbyn there arriving at the count in Islington. This is uh, uh, just happening now. Um, and while we're looking at him, because clearly he'll have taken in the, uh, uh, the extent of the defeat that the exit poll now, the projection is, uh, is putting forward. He's waving as he's coming in. These are live images from the count in Islington. And as we look at these images, John, I'm bound to ask you the direct question. Um, you know, are, are you calling on him to stand down? I think Jeremy will make his own decisions. I'm sure he's thinking about these right. things, and he will make his own decisions as, it is, as, as is right. What would you and expect? I do, not, I do not think we have to rush into this. We need a period of reflection. I think we were far too quick to rush into leadership elections in 2010 and 2015. We needed more reflection. Actually, the interregnums didn't help us, um, you know, in either of, on either of those occasions. I, I think, you know, I think we can, if if Jeremy chooses to go uh, as he may, uh, then I think we should have a leadership election in the spring, and uh, you know, he may well wish to stay on. We haven't got a, a deputy leader anymore, um, so he you may think well want choose to, face to stay Prime on. Minister's questions to against Boris Johnson. Well, Johnson you know, actually, after this Boris kind of Johnson result? was scared to face him in this election campaign, scared to debate the arguments, but Jeremy Corbyn, I'm sure, would be perfectly willing to face him. When they bring their uh, when they bring their withdrawal bill next week. So, John, it's clear you think that Jeremy Corbyn should hang on for a while while the party sort of works out um, what to do. But I'm intrigued as to whether or not you think that the party will have to move on from the kinds of policies you were putting forward. I mean, you're saying in your view they were not radical, and I just noted that you said that we we have to change public attitudes. Isn't it actually that the party has to change its attitude towards the public? I mean, isn't that actually exactly the problem that? Alistair Campbell was putting well, to you before. I think we do listen to the public, and I think the public are actually enthusiastic about many of our of our policies. I think Alistair actually accepted some of that. Um, uh, you know, it, we, we presented a very you know lengthy, bold manifesto, uh, which was really a programme for more than a government. It was a programme for ten years plus. Maybe we should have should have had a shorter manifesto. Uh, you know, we didn't have much time to sell uh, you know some of the newer policies in that. Uh, but I, I, I think that that programme is right because the state of the economy, because the state of our public services, because of the threat of, 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 of climate change is so dramatic that it requires drastic solutions and we will still need them at the next election. I'm pausing you a second, John, sorry, and I will bring uh, uh, Alan Duncan in as well in a second. Alan, you've been very patient. <laughs> but because we're on these images in Islington, um, Nick Robinson is there. Nick, um, what's the sense of uh, what's going on there, Nick? What are you sensing there, and, uh, just in terms of the mood music around the Labour leader? Well, extraordinarily sombre, Hugh. Uh, the Labour leader has arrived here at a leisure centre in his constituency, just a few hundred yards away from where he lives. He knows this place incredibly well. He must have dreamt of arriving here to cheering crowds, to the expectation that he might become Prime Minister. But instead he comes here knowing that his days in control of the Labour Party are coming to an end. Will they end tonight? Probably not, but they will end in the next few days. Whatever allies, like John Landsman say, the Corbyn era in the Labour Party is over. The argument that you've been having in the studio is really whether his people, the people he brought into the Labour Party, the people who control the Labour Party at the moment, can they cling on to control even as Mr Corbyn waves goodbye to the leadership of the Labour Party? That is the argument taking place. And as I look down now here on Jeremy Corbyn, who is standing just below me, I'm on the gallery, the balcony, just above him. He's talking to people he's worked with and been with for not just years, but decades. And that's why the hugs are coming here. You can see as he looks at them, he grips them by the arm, he hugs them as if to say, it is all now coming to an end. Not, of course, here in Islington North, he'll have a huge majority here. It's a very safe Labour seat. But the Corbyn project, the belief that his brand of socialism could take the Labour Party into government, that project is over, at least for him.